Rahman, my dear brothers and sisters. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Wa la taqoolu li man yuqtalu fi sabeel illahi amwat. And do not say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, and He's telling us, do not say that those people who are killed, those people who are martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are dead. Do not say that. Do not say they have died. بَلْ أَحْيَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ But indeed they are living but you do not perceive. They are living but you cannot perceive this. You are not aware of this reality. And the reason why I recited this verse, as I mentioned last week, Alhamdulillah, this is the month of Shawwal in which took place the Blessed Battle of Uhud in the Blessed Land of Medina al Munawwara. One of the great battles of Islam led by our beloved Prophet Wasallam and his companions in which many, many people were shaheed, many of the Sahaba were martyred in this battle. Among them the uncle of Rasulullah Wasallam, Sayyiduna Hamza radiallahu anh. Sayyiduna Hamza radiallahu anh, known as Sayyidu Shuhada, the leader of the martyrs also his title is Asad Allahi wa Asad Rasuli Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam One of the titles of Sayyiduna Hamza, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Sayyidu Shuhada He is the leader of the martyrs And this title is also used for Imam al Hussein. It is alternate, sometimes used for Sayyidina Hamza Sometimes used for Sayyidina Imam al-Husayn And there is another, another title that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Blessed Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bestowed upon Sayyidina Hamza Due to his blessed, his bravery, his shuja'ah, and his defending the honor of Islam and the honor of his beloved Prophet, Allah's beloved Prophet, وسلم, and that title is Asad Allahi wa Asad Rasuli, the Lion of Allah and the Lion of His Messenger. So I wanted to take this time to briefly mention some of the manaqib, some of the blessed qualities. Of Sayyiduna Amir Hamza radiallahu anhu, Sayyidu Shuhada, so that through their, his barakah radiallahu anhu and his blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our good deeds, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon us. I could stand here before you and deliver a political khutbah or a political bayan, but I'm not a political speaker. There are many things going on in the world, we see in the media relevant issues but often blurred by the media for example what's happening in Jerusalem what's happening in Masjid al-Aqsa we all many of us know about this we have received messages we see in the media may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them relief inshallah and remove the suffering from them and free them and free all the Muslims from the oppression of the wrongdoers and the mushrikeen and the munafiqeen and the kuffar but the reason why I don't want to make my bayan a political bayan is because I believe that the pitfalls that we are facing as an Ummah is due to our misguidance from the path in a sense that we have moved away from the Sunnah of Rasulullah the, the reason why we are facing oppression one of the main reasons is that we have moved, removed ourselves and removed our character and removed our lifestyles away from the lifestyle of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beloved Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the reason is we do not mention, and instead of, the reason why I don't want to make this a political bayan, a political sermon, is that because I believe that if we mention rather the blessed traits of Rasulullah, the blessed khasais and the blessed shamail of the Prophet Wasallam, the blessed biography of Rasulullah, the blessed biography and shamail and manaqib of his Ahlul Bayt, of his Sahaba, like Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh, and the awliya Allah who follow them, and the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen and the Banat al-Rasul and Abna al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those people who followed him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that when we learn about them this inculcates within our heart a love for them and when there is love then there is following if there is no love there is no following and when we follow then inshallah through that barakah and through that sincerity of following them then what happens is inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change our states and inshallah we have umid, we have hope in Allah that He will Rectify the affairs of the Ummah. As Allah indeed, He says in the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the state of a nation until they change themselves. I can speak about what's going on all I want, but if I do not, if we do not inculcate this love and the following, 
of the teachings of the Qur'an and Rasulullah and those that followed him, the generations, as the Prophet said, my generation is the best generation, and then the generation that follows, and then the generation that follows. If we do not inculcate this love and speak about them, then how are we supposed to change our state? And then how are we supposed to change the affairs of the Ummah? So this is why I want to mention some of the manaqib. Look at Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu. We learn many lessons from his blessed life. Radiallahu anhu wa asadillahi wa asadi rasooli sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How he defended the honor of his beloved nephew sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he answered the call to Islam, this gave lots of strength and confidence to the deen of Islam. Because Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu was known in the community of the Quraysh for his shuja' for his bravery, for his strength, and for his maqam and his status within society, and people would fear him. People would fear him. Because he was very brave, very strong radiallahu anhu. And when he became Muslim at the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he accepted the call to Islam, then this gave strength and quwa and izzah and honor to the deen of Islam. And indeed, he was honored to be part of the deen of Islam. And he defended Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, once Abu Jahl, the enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the enemy of Islam, he insulted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the way of the enemies. They would insult and they would make fun. And they would think that they could bring down the deen of Islam by doing this. And when the Prophet sallallahu was once in the Haram al-Sharif, in the, uh, in the precincts of the Kaaba al-Sharifa, then some of uh, the Quraysh, the Kuffar from the Quraysh, like Abu Jahl, they started insulting and saying insults to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect us from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always make us those who honor Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and will be honored by that, alhamdulillah. And when he did that, then some of the Sahabiyah, some of the women companions, they later on found Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu and they said that, do you know what Abu Jahl said to your companion, to your nephew sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, what did they say? And then they, she told him that this is what they said, they insulted him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was angry, he was upset. The Jalal and the majesty in his heart stood up and he went straight to Abu Jahl and he struck Abu Jahl in the face. And he threw him down. So, so much so that Abu Jahl was in shock, he was injured. But he said, don't ever do this to my nephew again, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He defended the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what we learned. Look at, in the battles of Badr, he was one of the shining stars of the companions of the warriors. On the front lines of the battle of Badr, how he defended Islam, radiallahu alayhi wa And then in the battle of Uhud, again he fought bravely and bravely, and he was martyred in the battle of Uhud. And he was martyred by one of the assassins named Wahshi, who was paid and, and given this bounty by one of the kuffar and he was told specifically to martyr Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu that is an act of revenge for those that Sayyidina Hamza killed from the kuffar in the battle of Badr and Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu was martyred in the battle of Uhud and we know that Abu Sufyan's wife Hind she performed many hideous acts on the blessed body of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu after the shahada and some people they don't understand why was Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu's blessed body treated this way after the shahada and rather than saying that this was something to humiliate him radiallahu anhu we actually when we reflect upon this we see that this was to actually elevate his station among the shuhada it was actually to elevate his station among the shuhada because the martyrs are a very special category. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Sunnah Rahman Rahim, وَمَن يُتَعِ اللَّهَ الرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Sallallahu Allah Azeem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that those people who follow and obey Allah and His Messenger وسلم, they will be with those that Allah has favored. And who are these people? Nabiyin, and Nabiyin, the, the Prophets, Alhamdulillah, the Prophets alayhim salatu wassalam, wassiddiqeen, and the righteous people, the awliya, the, 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 the high level ranking saints and friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the truthful and righteous people, wassiddiqeen, wassuhada, and the martyrs, wassadiqeen, and the pious and righteous people. 
and how great are those and how excellent are those as companions. So the shuhada are a best, very blessed category in Islam. And Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh, not only was he from the shuhada, he is also from the companions of Rasulullah, he is also from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu So, what we learn from what happened to the blessed body of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh, the mutilation by the kuffar, some people say this is humiliation, but it's not humiliation, it's actually an honor because what this represents is that Sayyidina Hamza wanted to give every one of his limbs and parts for the sake of Allah. He wanted shahada so much, he wanted martyrdom so much that he wanted to give every single part of his for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the level of tawheed that was in his heart that he received from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who received directly from Allah. This, the companions when they receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via and through the means of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they receive such a level of tawheed, such a level of understanding of tawheed and knowledge of tawheed that they wanted to sacrifice themselves for the sake of Allah. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh, was from the foremost of them and he wanted to sacrifice every one of his limbs. He said, Allah, this belongs to you, this body is yours, my soul is yours, everything is yours. And indeed, he sacrificed everything. So this is what happened to his body. We do not take this as shaming. The kuffar wanted to shame. The kuffar wanted to humiliate. This was their intention by mutilating the body of Sayyidina Hamza Allah. That's what they wanted to do. But when we look at it from Islam, we say that this is the ultimate level of martyrdom. The ultimate level of shahada that Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh gave everything that he had, even his blessed body parts and limbs for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his maqam, this is his great station. And as I recited the verse, Allah says, do not say that those people who have, who have been martyred in the way of Allah are dead. But ahyaun wa la tashurun. That indeed they are living, but you do not perceive. You do not perceive this spiritual reality, but they are living. Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh is living. Is living. The shuhada are living. Clearly. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا And do not think that those people who have died in the way of Allah, who have been martyred in the way of Allah, are dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ But indeed, they are alive and they receive risk, they receive provision from their Lord. They receive provision in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the verse of the Qur'an. And we all know that the Anbiya and Mursaleen are also alive in their graves. And there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Anbiya, so the, 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 the hasharat of the ard, the bodies of the Anbiya, the blessed bodies of the, of, the, of the prophets and the messengers, they cannot be decomposed by the insects in the earth. They are haram, they are unlawful for those decomposers to come even near their bodies. But ahya'un, but indeed they are alive and in their blessed graves, in their blessed resting places, they perform salah and they are given risk. They are given risk, they are given provision. This is hadith of Rasulullah, this is Hayatul Nabi, Hayatul Anbiya wal Mursaleen. Right? They, they, yes, they go through a stage of death. They go through a stage of death, but this is just a transition mode. It's a transition. They go through that stage and then they are given their hayat back. But they are in a different world that we cannot perceive. And the shuhada also. And there's even a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu referring to the Hafad of Quran, the people who memorize the Quran and act upon the teachings of the Quran. So the Hafad of Quran who memorize and also act upon it, that even their bodies are preserved. Even their bodies are preserved. They, they, even the hasharat of the earth, the decomposers cannot come near, the incest cannot come near their bodies even. If this is the Hafad, then imagine the shuhada, imagine the ashab of Rasul. Imagine the Ahlul Bayt and foremost among them, imagine the Anbiya wal Mursaleen and imagine our blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Rasulullah So they are alive, the Qur'an is telling us this. So we learn many things from the life of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu alayhi And because they are alive and the shuhada are alive, many people spiritually experience people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bless with these experiences they experience the, 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 the reality of their, of their life even after they have passed. For example, when you visit Uhud in, in Medina al Munawwara, it is said that before you visit Rasulullah, before you present yourself to Rasulullah at the Rawdah of Rasulullah, 
the adab and the etiquette is to visit Sayyidina Hamza, Sayyidina Shuhada. And he is resting close to the, close to the battlefield of Uhud, the mountain of Uhud. And there is an enclosure there. And inside that enclosure, there is a lesson maqam of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu and also the shuhada of Uhud, for example, Sayyidina Musa'ad bin Umayr radiallahu and Sayyidina Abdullah bin Jahash radiallahu and these are companions of Rasulullah sallallahu who fought in the battle of Uhud and martyred, or martyred in the battle of Uhud radiallahu So you know when you are visiting them, you are actually visiting someone who is alive. This is why when you visit them, you say assalamu alaikum, you present them with salam. Then you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say Qur'an, you make dua and inshallah through their barakah and blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your dua. Inshallah, <coughs> this is the etiquette. And you, you visit Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anh, and then you go and present yourself to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are some of the etiquettes that our mashayikh and shuyuk teach us. There is one story of a person who went to Medina to Munawwara, and you know when you visit Medina to Munawwara and you visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you're in this blessed land and you visit Haram bin Sharifain there's lots of adab and there's lots of etiquette required etiquette of your outward and etiquette of your inward state as well even your thoughts we have to be very careful what we're thinking, what we're, what we're desiring for example there's this one person who went from him in uh, India or Pakistan and he went to Medina to Munawwara and he was having some yogurt in Medina to Munawwara, some yogurt from Medina, made in Medina to Munawwara. And he was eating, eating it, and then, you know, in his, what he said is, he said, you know, this yogurt is, is not so great, it's not like the one we receive in Pakistan. This yogurt is not like the one we have in Pakistan, you know, we get the fresh cream and everything like that, and everything is different, it tastes so nice, this is not the same. That person, when he, he had a dream that night, and in the dream he saw Sayyidina Hamza, he saw Sayyidina Hamza, Sayyidina Shuhada, Asadina, wa Sayyidina Rasul. And Sayyidina Hamza, you know what he said to him? He said, If you do not like it, leave. If you do not like the things of Medina, then leave Medina. So we even are learning from Sayyidina Hamza after the passing of Sayyidina Hamza. This is the hayat of the Shuhada. The Shuhada are alive. And they're still teaching us, like they taught this person, to have adab in Medina to Munawwara. Adab of the blessed city of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That even the, things, even the things that you eat and drink in Medina do not criticize. Why? Because they are connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The city is connected to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what we learn. So we learn from the blessed life of Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu But because he is at such a maqam, he is shaheed, he is still alive as the Quran is saying. We are still learning from him spiritually radiallahu So we can still mention his manaqib. And I'll leave with one point. And this is a different point I was mentioning from last time about the rights that our children have over us and the rights that we have over our children. And there's one very important right that our children have over us, my brothers and sisters, and that is to make dua for them. That is to make lots of dua for them. The success of your children, the key to success for your children is for you, the parents, to make dua for them. The dua, and I'll, I'll tell you a story of Imam al-Bukhari, the great Imam of Hadith, Muhaddith, and he was also a wali of Allah and a saint and a righteous person. And it is said that the collection of hadith that he gathered, Imam al-Bukhari, is so authentic that they say after ulama say that after the Quran, the most authentic book is al-Bukhari Sharif. Sahih al-Bukhari, Jam al-Sahih. Because it collects and he compiled the blessed ahadith and sayings of Rasulullah and the actions of Rasulullah and those things that the Prophet told us to do and for, pro prohibited us from doing into this blessed collection. And Imam al-Bukhari, I was listening to a lecture and I didn't know this, so I wanted to share this with you. That when he was a young boy, when he was a young boy, Imam al-Bukhari, there was a plague in his city. There was a plague in his city and the disease was spread and he went blind. Imam al-Bukhari went blind. He was a young boy. And his mother was so affected by this and hurt by this and she was a pious person and a wali of, a wali of Allah and a righteous person. So she wanted, she fought for her son. So she would get up in the night and pray the Hajjud. And at the time of the Hajjud, she would make dua and, and cry in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, give sight and cure my son. Cure my son, give him his sight back. And once she was making dua and she fell asleep and she saw in her sleep Sayyidina Ibrahim, Nabiullah Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Nabiullah Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam said, do not worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your dua. 
And she was, when she woke up, she was excited. She ran, she ran to Imam Bukhari, her son. And she saw that when he woke up, he started to recognize the things in his room and his sight was bad. So my reason for mentioning this is that even the great ulama and the awliya, they benefit from the du'as of their parents. Right? So why not make du'a for our children? Right? The key to success for our children is for us to make du'a for them. Right? And indeed the Prophet ﷺ, he, he said that when a person dies, all his deeds are finished. Except three. When a person dies, all his deeds end except three. Illa min thalaf. What are these three? Sadaqatin jariyah. So continuous charity. Aw ilmin yuntafa'ubi. Or knowledge which benefits. Aw waladin salihin yad'ula. Or a pious child that you leave behind who prays for you. These are the three things that will continue your elevations and your deeds after your death. Sadaqat al jariyah, continuous charity. Our ilmin yuntafa'ubi. Or, or knowledge which benefits a walid and salihin yadu'lahu or a pious child who prays for you right so if we pray for our children that they become pious they become righteous they become knowledgeable and acting upon that knowledge and they become lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Ahlul Bayt and the Sahaba and the Awliya and the righteous people and they follow in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then inshallah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your dua and when we are leaving the dunya, and when we leave this world, then inshallah our children will, be, will become a sadaqah jari in itself, in itself. In themselves they will become continuous charity. Because they will be praying for us, and they will be praying for you. And they will inshallah have acquired the knowledge which benefits. So all these three things will be found in those children. You know, they will be a sadaqah jari, they will, they will have knowledge which benefits, and they will be praying for you. They will be virtuous child, righteous child salihin who are praying for you. Right, so this is the legacy that we want to leave behind. This is the legacy that we want to leave behind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept what was said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our, our presence here in this blessed house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for this blessed day of Jumar, this blessed day of celebration and Eid and happiness for the Mu'mineen and Mu'minat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the suffering from the Ummah Alhamdulillah Rahimeen. Khususan in the lands of Al-Quds, Baytul Maqdis, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove uh, any oppression from the Muslimin and Mu'mineen and Muslimat al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Ummah from uh, the, the treacherous uh, oppression of the Kuffar and of the non-believers and of the Munafiqeen and the Mushrikeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from uh, any sort of evil eye, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the Hasideen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah elevate those who have passed away from the Ummah. May Allah elevate their jannah, their, their darajat in Jannah. May Allah give them Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove any sins from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa to all of those who are, who are sick, who are ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them afiyah and a full recovery, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill and grant all of our noble wishes, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. We have, Ya Allah, we come with hajat, we come with uh, intentions, and we come with uh, wishes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill all our noble intentions and wishes and those that are for your rida, for your pleasure, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Bi rahmatika, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa aratim wa da'awana. Alhamdulillah. أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا